So I don't want y'all sure I don't want to give. Infinite and honest tower, Heavenly Father, not great King, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahusha, Bashem, Hara, Karkadash. Also, when they get done, but honest to our elder apostles, a great millstone, who our Heavenly Father has poured the Spirit on to teach us his glorious gospel, and the uh, elder bishops right up under them, who are worthy to double honor. Shalom, one of you brothers, the salutation to my fellow laborers in the Mashiach, Yahweh, pushing this truth across the four winds in this fine hour. Making your call and elections assure by abounding this labor of love. Shalom one of you brothers. All right, this clip, um, I think this beloved brother is from the uh, Jamaica camp. And it's a lot here if I'm wrong. Uh, but the brother, I'm looking at the sit down and it's very edifying. And he's shedding light on the foul spirit. Um, a lot of brothers have encountered it. Uh, with guys that are good teachers over the years. And, you know, it comes out with with various testimonies that they were horrible brothers. And that, that's a foul spirit uh, that was in the ancient world, in the early church. Uh, and, and, you know, Paul warned us of these type of things for uh, our day and time. So I'm going to play the clip and I'm going to just, you know, um, this is a, a response to the brothers um, sit down. And um, it's very edifying. And it's just to shed light um on these demons, when they poke the head, you got to cut the heads off of them because it brings a lot of turmoil to the body, a lot of hurt, pain, you know. And how about Shema Shai is not the author of confusion, and he's given us the spirit to deal with such things when they arise, you know. So we're here to warn the sheep uh, of, of wolves that might come in, of foul spirits that you might see, and you know how to deal with them, uh, as soon as you see them, so that leaven don't grow. All right, so I'm about to play the clip and uh, just respond to this uh, beautiful epistle the brother um, did. The sun and your own two feet, I believe, are to be built up and, and nourished and, and be able to grow within the feet. But a lot of men, they don't get this, you know, good teachers, but once again, horrible brothers. Okay. All right, now, um, Verse 2 says, it says, And if a man thinketh that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing, yet as he ought to know. Exactly, because the pride has blinded him. Right? But if any man love God, the same is known of him. And that is it. You know, we're just trying to do what is pleasing unto the Lord, which Yahweh Shai summed it up perfectly, saying that, look, you know, um, to, to, to love the Lord with all thy heart, you know, and with all thy soul. And the second is like unto it which is what, to love thy neighbor as thyself, to have that goodwill and, and wanting to see your, your, your fellow Israelite being built up and, 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 and being nourished, you know, to, to always be in a good case. As it says, what, well, love, work it no ill to his neighbor, for love is the full, um, is, is, um, love is, is the fulfillment of the law. All right? Now, on this side, we know that, you know, we, we, um, two-thirds of our people are unbelievers you know we have unbelievers that are not going to make it but you know with those within the ministry there's a certain level uh, of love and affection and care that you should have um, for, for those within the body you know and, and it and uh, brotherly love and how you um you know you interact with brothers and, and the believers should 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 be should be um to the highest level and even then even among the unbeliever you still you know have to conduct yourself as a certain way um, you know, even 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 within that, that that walk amongst those who are not, you know, of the faith. All right, I have one more precept. All right, and that's paramount, man. Uh, this thing is our uh, of ours is all about the elect. All right, and the elect is the kingdom of Yahweh Shemah Shai. and the Lord gave us His glorious gospel to teach us how to rule, how to coexist, and how to live in the kingdom to come. And it's all about loving your brother because your brother is the kingdom of heaven. We are lively stones, fitly joined together, all right? So if you can't live in peace, serenity, and coexist with your brother, all right, you're not worthy to be in the kingdom of heaven, all right? So uh, when you have uh, brothers that bring out... Uh, good information, you look at them on camera and they, uh, they'll edify you with a lot of the things they teach. You know, they don't go off on doctrine. All right. We have to not only bring forth those beautiful epistles and, uh, edify the flock, but the brothers that are 
right amongst you and that you can touch, that you can uh, see, hear, and smell. Those brothers, you have to apply those scriptures when you're dwelling with those brothers because brothers come from different walks of life. They have different outlooks on life, all right, because we're not raised the same. And when you have different personalities, all right, you, you're going to clash. So the Spirit teaches us how to mesh with one, one another, all right? You don't be in this thing and you have malicious intent towards a brother, you have unforgiveness towards a brother, you start dealing with them treacherously, all right? But yet, you can get out there and prophesy with the best of them, all right? That's a spirit that's been amongst uh, Great Millstone. Um, and it's picked its early, early head, its ugly head out from time to time, you know? And, and we're living in the, in the fine hour where the intemperanceness is as, as an end, like uh, the beloved brother Ezra wrote, infidelity is getting cut off. So the Lord is purging, sifting, and cleansing this house. So I'm going to start off um, with the brother, uh, beloved brother Paul because he warned us of these thing, type things to come, you know. A lot of these things that are going on is just prophecy being fulfilled and necessary evils for us to learn from. All right? So this is Exodus chapter 20, verse 28. All right? Uh, take heed there unto yourselves and to all the flock, all right? This is what the kingdom of heaven is about, tending to the flock, taking care of the flock, okay? We're, we're here to warn the flock of, of wolves, because wolves, what do they do? Sheep, they devour them. So what's a shepherd's job? To protect the sheep from the wolves, all right? It's a metaphor, and the Lord likens us to sheep. So what do we do? We tell brothers, look, Hey, this is the doctrine of life here. This is the rivers of living water you should drink of. This is the cistern you should drink of. If somebody's teaching something contrary to that, it's, it's a bitter spring. Don't drink of it. Don't partake in it. All right? If you hear somebody teaching something that's contrary to this, stay away from them. That's a wolf. That's the lot of a prophet. That's the lot of a shepherd. All right? To protect and love the sheep. Okay? Over the which the Holy Ghost made you overseers, all right? The uh, elder brother is an overseer over the younger brother, all right? We are, we learned this knowledge from elder brothers and ultimately the elder apostles of Great Millstone who are the examples, they, they are the examples of how we should be and they love one another. The elder Gabor, Elder Taha, Elder Ariamlab, Elder um, Rekar, all right? I, I was fortunate to meet Elder Rekar, man. These guys love the body. They 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 um lead by word and deed, all right? And they taught us to love one another, not devour one another. They told us if we have issues with one another, how to work them out, how to deal with them, all right? That's what an overseer does. To feed the church of Yahweh, which have purchased you, which he have purchased with his own blood. And that's a serious job description. This is one of the most dangerous, this is the most dangerous job on the planet Earth. Because you, have, if you don't do this job right, you will get put to death. Okay, this is that's why it's written. Mark for the uh, prize of the calling, the high calling. Mark for the prize of the high calling. This is a high calling by the power of heaven and earth and our great King, who for all things were created for Him and by Him. All right, and they they don't play. All right, they don't play. All right, Elder Shaddai don't play in our great king and say, kiss the uh, king lest he be angry. All right, so we do nothing to offend him, okay? For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter among you, not sparing the flock. And that's talking about uh, malicious men that have come in and teach things that they ought, do things that they ought not, and uh, bring confusion to the, to the body and scatter the flock. All right. This happens from time to time. OK. Also of also of your own self shall men arise. All right. So guys in the camp, guys in the church that you're in, you are going to have men that arise with foul spirits and do malicious things that you wouldn't even think can happen in the truth. I've witnessed it. Lie, backbite. All right. Do all manner of wickedness. All right. Uh, teach one thing and teach it well, but do another with their actions, okay? This, this happens. This spirit uh, was 
in the early church, as you can see, and Paul was warning them about these things to come. And it's happening, it has happened in these modern times where during the time of this great awakening, all right? Speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them, all right? Playing on the minds of innocent brothers, manipulating them, all right? Taking advantage of their um, their sincerity uh, and their innocence and, and, and turning them into uh, twice the demon of hell that they are, all right? These things have happened. This is not uh, someone... Uh, just speaking things off the top of their head. And you can see this uh, one guy, you know, he has testimonies about him. I, and I know him personally. I've dealt with him personally. He's done things to me. And that's why when you look at him, what he's doing right now, um, I don't even want to say his name. All right. Those fears grow on him. And the next thing you know, they're, they're just, they're just uh, no different than a damn Edomite. All right. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years, I seized not the one every one night and day with the tears. Now, that was a good shepherd, man. That was a good shepherd. All right. Paul was crying and lamenting. All right. And telling the brothers, watch out for these uh, malicious Pharisees, uh, even brothers that will grow up, get foul spears on them and grow up amongst you and try to scatter the flock. All right. So he was warning us of these things to come. All right. And they have came. All right. We, we've we seen them. Um, and the brother brought out earlier in that epistle he did, the guy Yardan, the guy uh, Amashai Bala. All right. Those were guys that were, um, when I came into the faith, you know, they were great teachers. They were damn good teachers. All right. But when the testimonies of the men that was round about them, yoked with them, came out, they were horrible brothers. All right. Horrible brothers. Okay. So, us older brothers, we have to learn from the folly of other men's um, transgressions. All right. This is uh, Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 17. It is written. All right. Obey them that have rule over you. All right. And submit yourselves, all right? We have to submit to our elder brothers. The elder apostles are great millstone. When they put out decrees and they tell us to do such things, we have to uh, do it with fear and trembling, all right? For they watch over your souls. This is the lot of an elder brother, as they must give account. You see, the elder of the brothers, hey, you have to give account, us elder brothers. You know, some of us brothers uh, have brothers that come in under us and we have to show them the way just like it was shown to us all right and we must give account how we do it all right and you have to do it with fear and trembling and you have some guys that pride creeps in and their fear level goes down and and, and they deal with the the flock as if they were hirelings no different than the edomite lord nova all right and we have to get built up so we can see these things and address these things and don't let it go on for long periods of time, all right, and nip it in the bud because we're at the end. There's no time for that shit. That they may do it with joy and with not and not with grief because if you're not doing something, you don't love your brother next to you and you have issues with him, it's not going to be joy amongst you. It's going to be grief. It's going to be variance, okay? That's why the Lord gave us Matthew the 18th chapter so these things don't happen. For that is unprofitable for you. It's, no, it's unprofitable for no one if you have a man with an issue towards a brother. He got a foul spirit and he's manipulating brothers, using the flock, being malicious for the flock. That's not good for no one because what is this written? 1 Corinthians 14 and 33. Yahweh is not the author of confusion. And confusion will happen when you're not rolling in the spirit and you're giving, it, you're giving into those sensual, carnal desires. All right? You're going to have uh, issues where, hey, you, the, the, the church could get uh, destroyed, all right? You, you have accounts where you got to have brothers from out of town to come in and move furniture around, expel guys to get that church back in order because when mold get in the house, it destroys the house. You got to expel that leaven, all right? And these things have happened. So the, these epistles go out for brothers. When they see these things, you know, you, you get on it. You don't let it go on for long periods of time. 
All right. In fact, I got some precepts. All right, because a lot of times, uh, if you see an elder brother doing some foul shit, you, you you be scared. A lot of brothers be scared to uh, check them, you know. And it's a way to do things, you know. It's written rebuke not an elder, but if an elder's going off, there's a proper protocol that you go through to handle. Okay, this is Matthew chapter eighteen. And 32, all right, and it's written, uh, then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee of thy debt, and because thou de thou, thou desirest me. And when you read this uh, parable, it was, uh, he, had a, he had a servant that had a great debt. His master called him for him. And this is the Lord, uh, parabolically, metaphorically speaking, unto how he's forgiven us of all our sins and how he wants us to deal with other men who are in sin. All right? He's forgave us. He has mercy on us. And he's fed us. He has uh, gave us everything we need to attain salvation. So when we have younger brothers come in after us, he expects us to deal with them how he's dealt with us. All right? And he was telling this servant, that he was wicked because he forgave him. He was merciful, merciful to him. He gave him this knowledge. And in turn, when it was time for him to show mercy, it was time for him to uh, deal with someone that was uh, in debt to him. He dealt with him perversely. All right. So does not thou also have compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had compassion, had pity on thee. His Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he shall pay that was due to him. And the torment is in this day and time, man, you're going in a lake of fire, all right? That's how you're going to pay off your debt. You're going to come in to the kingdom of heaven as a newborn in these Hebrew huggies, all right? And that's what we have to learn as the elder brothers, how to not deal maliciously and treacherous, treacherously with the Lord's little ones, all right? Okay? It is written. If anybody calls one of these little ones to earth, it's better that you tie a great millstone around your neck and jump in the ocean and commit suicide, okay? So we have to take heed how we deal with brothers, all right? The Lord is merciful to us, so we be merciful to brothers. Now, if brothers do something off, yeah, you rebuke, you reprove them. According to Galatians 6 is 1, he that, if one is, if a brother is caught in the fault, those that are spiritual uh, restore their brother spiritually, all right, through the scriptures, of course, all right, but just doing things, backbiting, uh, starting to molds, all right, just wrecking havoc in the house of your high by Shema or Shah, nah, all right, then, and then getting at camp and bringing out the best precepts, doing videos, bringing breaking down the best videos nah that 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 demon head is getting chopped off those days are over those type of men the lord is exposing and getting out of the way and if you are a man with a spirit on um on you like that and the brothers bring it up to you humble yourself fast purge yourself so you don't get thrown out of the way all right, we all have to have self-analysis of ourselves because when pride creeps in, um, pride is going to uh, have your ass swimming in a lake of fire if you don't purge yourself, cleanse yourself through this word, man. Because knowledge do pop, uh, puff up, okay? It does that. All right, this is uh, the book of uh first john chapter four verse 20 all right and it's written if a man say i love you how and hate of his brother he is a liar okay you love your brother according to these scriptures man you can't be around a, a brother and you you every time you're around other brothers you're talking about that brother and saying what this brother has done if this brother is off, man, you have a counsel with him and you expel that brother from the body. You don't just have him around dealing with him treacherously, all right? And you have to go to that brother 
And y'all have to work this thing out according to the scriptures. If the brother don't listen to you, bring a witness. If he don't listen to you and a witness, you bring him before the church, okay? But it ain't no such thing as us uh, holding bitterness and resentment against a brother and we got to be around him every day. Nah, now that's off, okay? Can't be around a brother uh, saluting him. Y'all about Shema Shah Baraka Thai, brother, hugging him and shit. And, and, and as soon as he walk off, you 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 dealing with him treacherously, all right? That's not the spirit that we were taught, okay? You can't tell him you 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 um you love him, but you really hate him on the inside. All right? That's a foul spirit. It's perverse. For he that loves not his brother, whom he have seen, this brother is around you. He's in your camp. All right? But every chance you get, you're around him, you're dealing with him in an ill manner. How can he love Yahweh whom he have not seen? All right? Because uh, when you read Matthew, what, what that is? That's um, Matthew, the 25th chapter, I think, where he say, he that gave water to the least of these, you gave it to him. So every brother represents a Mashiach Yahweh. When you deal treacherously with a brother, you're dealing treacherously with our great king. You know, all right, and it's, it's written, for he that loved not his brother whom he have, have seen, how can he love Yahweh whom he have not seen? But when you are looking at your brother, you're looking at Yahweh by Shema Shai. And this commandment, we have him that he that love Yahweh love his brother also. In fact, let me find that precept. Um, when you did it to the least of these, you did it to me. Is it, It's Matthew 24. Or 25. I'm going to find it. Bear with me. All right. Uh, yeah, got to be 25. Bear with me. Okay, this is Matthew 25. All right. Yeah, this is it. Okay. This I'm, I'm going to get straight to the point. Matthew 25 and 34. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, and hear the kingdom prepare for you for the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. See, when you loving your brother, you feed your brother. All right? If your brother thirsts, you, you give your brother a drink. If your brother is in need, you take care of your brother. That's why the Lord say, love your father with all your heart, with all your soul, and love your mind. And the second one is like unto it. The second greatest commandment, love your brother. Take care of your brother. All right? When you're taking care of your brother, you're taking care of your heart by Shema Shai. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. Then, then shall the righteous answer him saying, Lord, when was when were thee in hunger and fed thee or uh, thirsty and I gave thee drink? And when, when when saw we thee a stranger and took thee in or naked and clothed thee? Or when we saw thee sick in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, and as much as you have done it to one of the least of my brethren, you have done it to me, all right? So the way you treat your brother is how you're going to treat Yahweh Shai. Because every brother is Yahweh Shai, man. That's why you, it's a grave thing. It's a serious offense to deal treacherously with Yahweh by Shema Shai's servant, man. You, you got to watch how you deal with brothers. And, all right? That's that's a capital offense if you're dealing with any of his servants um, treacherously. All right? It's a righteous thing for the Yahweh Bashim Shai to bring tribulation to those that trouble his little ones. I'm roughly paraphrasing. All right. This is uh John. Okay, uh 13 and 30. All right, 34. And it is written. A new cat a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I as I have loved you that you also love one another, all right? And this is the spirit, all right? This is the standard. This is the bar that we have to all adhere to, man, all right? We have to obey these scriptures and love brothers according to the scriptures. That's how you love your by Shema Shah. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you love one to another. That's the standard we have to live according to, all right? And the Lord told us, 
the things that we shouldn't do with each other, all right? And we're going to get into that. All right, this is uh this is their standard. Okay? This is the code of ethics Yahweh Shimon gave us. This is Psalms chapter 133 and verse 1. And it says, A song of the degrees of Dawada. Behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. All right. That's the Lord demands peace in the churches, man. All right. We have to be dwell together in unity. All right. You can't be dealing with brothers with malicious intent. You can't be lording over brothers, being a, a, a fucking overlord over a brother. All right. We're supposed to love one another, be kindly and affectionate one to another. All right. Like Paul was to the early church. Let me get that precept. Uh, this is the spirit. We're supposed to be elder brothers. We're supposed to be with younger brothers. And, you know, build them up. All right? So they can do the same thing to other brothers. This is uh, the beloved brother Paul epistle to the Thessalonians. The believers in Thessalonica, the Israelite foreigners that were dwelling in the land of Thess the, that Roman province of Thessalonica. Thessalonica. All right, this is First First Thessalonians two and seven, but we were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherishes her children. So, so being affectionately the seers of you, we were willing to have imparted to you not the gospel of Yahweh only, but our own souls, because you were dear unto us. All right, for you remember, brother, and our labor and travail for labor night and day, because we would not be chargeable to any of you. We preach unto you the gospel of Yahweh by Shema Shah. And he said that those that they him and the um, brothers that he sent to Thessalonica, they dealt with them like a nurse cherished her children. They were affectionate towards them. That's how we gotta be towards brothers. If you're not dealing with brothers in that manner, you're not worthy to be in the kingdom of Yahweh Shema Shah. And if you think a brother is off. You deal with that brother accordingly. You don't have him around you. And the, and the whole time y'all around one another, you're dealing with him maliciously. You're, you're talking to other brothers about, around, about that guy. And then you have, the you you put no seeds in other brothers. Now they dealing with that brother in a foul manner. And those two brothers won't even have no variance between each other. So in discord, see, that th those are the type of things that have happened. I've witnessed it. All right? That demon cannot show his head amongst the body. It has no room to breathe in the body. Yahabah Shema Shai is cutting that demon off, man. And when you see that demon, if you see that demon, you cut it off as soon as you see it. The Lord has gave us a quarter ethics to live by. We, he's taught us how to deal with controversy. The Lord musters up the battle. He did this on purpose. He put us in the land of Chaldeans on, our, on, on purpose so we could learn how to love one another. He brought us from different walks of life. So did he know different personalities would go mesh. But guess what? What brings us together? This doctrine. And it teaches us how to deal with each other, how to take the low, how to um, let your tongue cleave to your mouth. All right. Sometimes you want to just make your point across and you just take the low. And so your brother uh don't offend and you'd be like all right brother and you might talk to him about that situation later when when cooler heads prevail and he's not in his hot displeasure all right we don't we're not supposed to be walking around slandering one another hating one another dealing with each with shit man we was doing that shit in the world go yeah how about shima was shot forbid that demon show his ugly head again man all right this is uh the book of Sirach. And us all older brothers, man, like we have to hold ourselves accountable. We have to be examples to younger brothers, you know. Like as it pertains to me, I've made mistakes. I've done things uh that I shouldn't have done in front of brothers, all right? Some things was totally off, and then some I had to learn, like, even in my liberty, you don't let certain brothers, younger brothers, see you in your liberty and in your nakedness because they could take things the whole wrong way. And there's certain things that I did that I was just wrong, and younger brothers saw it, and younger brothers, when they see you do certain things, they pick it up, and they think it's all right, okay? So 
even if you're just not being a tyrant or an overlord, you have to be perfect amongst younger brothers and be upright in conversation and the way you do things, okay? Because your howl will kill you if you lead to your little ones astray, okay? So us older brothers, we got to learn how to be uh, great examples to the younger brothers in word and deed. We got to be upright and perfect. What did it say the office of a bishop and a deacon have to be? They said them brothers got to be blameless, man. And when you have a lot of younger brothers under you, you're in a position of authority. And the Lord ain't playing with you. How you lead those young brothers, okay? This is Sirach 4 and uh, 27, and it's written, Make not thyself an underling to a foolish man, and neither accept the person of the mighty. All right? And this is the thing about that. Us brothers, uh... In Matthew, the third chapter, it says the tree that does not bear fruit, bear fruit is thrown into the fire. Brothers, we have, every brother, even young brothers, you got to get built up to a level where you can know when you see something wrong and right. All right. You have to get built up when you see something going on. You'd be like, oh, no, that's off. And you have to speak up about it. You don't just sit there and look at some shit go off. Shit, shit um, happen and it's happened continuously and you don't say nothing. All right. So that's why every brother has to get off the milk, the meat and grow up the steak and potatoes. We have to grow in this thing of ours because um, from the encounters I had, you had a lot of guys that were seeing things going off, going on that was totally off. But nobody said nothing. And that that serpent just turned into a fucking 10 headed dragon, it, it, you know. So now we're in the time of you cut that fucking demon heads off. As soon as you see it, you cut that demon head off. All right, verse 30. Be not as a lion in the house, nor a frantic among thy servants. All right? So you don't lord over brothers. You don't um, talk to brothers any kind of way. You know, you don't uh, deal with brothers like they niggas in the street. All right? You deal with brothers accordingly to the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Shai. You respect brothers, even if they go off. It's a certain way that you rebuke and reprove them. Okay, we're kings. We're and we're raising up kings. All right, the elder apostles of Great Millstone are raising up regal aristocrats. He is teaching us how to be rulers in the eons to come. All right, so we have to learn how to deal with even the smallest matters. Uh, professionally, okay? It's nothing personal. Everything is a uh, business in this thing of ours, okay? So we can't be frantic um, lions in the house uh, dealing with, with, with men in a, a frantic manner. We got to always be regal, self-controlled, temperate, temper, not self-willed, and deal with the affairs of Yahweh Shema Shai like our great king did, man, all right? When he, when he saw Peter going off, he say, if, if it counted for him to rebuke me, he said, get behind me, Satan, you're offense to me. And then he told Peter what he did, all right? After he rebuked Peter and told Peter what he did and Peter repented, all right? You don't talk about that matter no more. That's over with. Peter learned from it and you keep pushing, all right? That's the way, that's that's what the Lord did and he showed us things written four times was written five learning and that's the way we deal with things all right if peter come do it again then maybe you got to give him a sore judgment okay and that's me hypothetically speaking we have to learn how to be judges righteous judges all right when they say you will, will judge the 12 tribes uh on the, you would we, we would judge angels. We would judge the 12 tribes of the house of Israel. He would give us rod of iron so, so we could judge. We're going to judge according to this blessed law. We're not going to have false balances. We're going to judge in righteousness. Okay? So we have to learn how to be regal aristocrats uh, judging in righteousness because they say when the righteous are in power, the people rejoice. All right? You're going to get a, a, a fair shake. All right? And that's what the Lord is teaching us to do. And not to deal with malici maliciously uh, with this blessed house. Okay? This is our uh, Ephesians. That's my next precept. All right. The epistle to the Israelite foreigners scattered in Ephesus. All right. This is Ephesians 5, and I'm going to start at verse 6. All right. 
It's written. Let no man deceive you with vain words. All right. Every brother um, has to submit to his superior. But if your superior is going off. All right. Don't be deceived if he's teaching you how to deal treacherously. That's why we all have to study to show ourselves approved. We got to know the difference between clean and unclean, holy and unholy. For because of these things come the wrath of Yahweh upon the children of disobedience. I mean, if, if things go on in the camp and the, the overseer is teaching leaven and shit, when the elder apostles come down on that house, he'll destroy that whole house. Man, fuck it. Kick all of them out. You don't want that. <laughs> I've seen it almost come to pass, man. You don't want that, man. We don't want that. So us, we you want to be able to be on a level to make sure certain things never happen again. Be not there for partakers with them, okay? If somebody's doing something out of line, when we were real taught through the spirit of power, you how about Shema Shai? Rebuke, reprove. Go up the ladder if you have to. All right? This is what you, this is what the Lord left us to do, to take care of his house. If mold growing in that house, you got to disinfect it, clean it. Or even tear that bitch down and rebuild. Okay? For you were sometimes in darkness. See, that shit we was doing in the world. The shit that was going on in the world should not be going on in the house and the affairs of your house by Shema Shai. But now are you light in the Lord? Yes. Walk as children of light. And the light represents this truth. All right? This doctrine of life that we were taught, we have to apply it to our lives and apply it to the young men that's coming in this thing of ours. For the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is a, acceptable unto the Lord. All right. And we have to know what's the difference between right and wrong. All right. We have you have to every man has to know that itself because every man is a judge. If you're in an elect number, you're a judge, you're a king. According to Revelation, the first chapter, our, our great king said he's raised up a nation of king and priests. OK. So if you're in that elect number, you're a judge. So you have to learn how to judge matters, man. All right? And, and, th and this is a, a grave sit down. The most I put the spirit on that brother to do it. This is a serious matter. All right? The Lord is serious about what's going on in the churches. Okay? This is uh, the book of... Uh, but love, brother, I was just talking about it. Peter. All right. This is first Peter chapter two, verse five. And it's written, ye also as living stones. See, the, the kingdom of heaven is the men. We are those lively stones. We have built up a spiritual house. The house of David is a company of men, 144,000 men, a holy priesthood. The Lord say, I build up a nation of priests. All right. All these men have to be of the same mindset to offer up spiritual sacrifices. That's what we're doing right now. All of this prophesying, uh, these epistles we are doing. All right. All these fastings and labor. These are sacrifices for Yahweh by Shem Shah, acceptable to Yahweh by Hamashiach, by Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. All right. So the Lord teaches us how to sacrifice. He teaches us what to say. He teaches how to, us how to conduct ourselves amongst one another. All right. And this is what he tells us. All right. These lively stones, this is what he commands us to do. All right. This is our uh, Ephesians. Back to Ephesians. This time we're going to go to the fourth chapter. Let's start at the 15th verse. Okay. It say, but speak the truth in love. Who are you speaking the truth to? Your brother. That you may grow up in him in all things. Okay? Which is which is the head, even Hamashiach Yahweh See, we're doing what our great king told us to do. He told us to love one another. All right? He told us don't deal with each other maliciously. From the whole body fitly joint together and, com and compacted by that which every joint supplies. See, these lively stones got to be yoked with one another. So how are you going to be yoked to a man you have a disdain towards? How are you going to have be yoked to a man that you uh, secretly hate? That's going to tear down that whole house. All right? We pillars in the temple. That pillar weak. That pillar that, that has the hate in it is very weak. It's not going to be able to hold up the house. Well, that pillar, that shit going to cave in. Okay? 
that that pillar is is not worthy of be to be in that house. It's weak. They got termites in that motherfucker. All right. According to the official working in the measure of every part, make an increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. All right, it's all about love and, and the brothers synchronizing together, brothers being around each other, preferring one another. Okay? It is no room for uh, brothers doing beautiful sit downs, beautiful edification when they're bringing out on the highways. All right, but when they're dealing with brothers, they're dealing with them maliciously. They're doing, they're just basically hypocrites, walking hypocrites. Man, uh, the Lord is going to kill guys like that. All right, and guys moving like that, if you move like that, you repent, acknowledge your transgressions, and you change. You, 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 uh, you know, you, you change the beat to how you're moving. Okay? This I say, therefore, and testify in your howl that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk. That's how people in the world walk. All right? In the vanity of their mind. All right? They, they go off of their impulses. They gossip. They backbite. They tell people they love them. And then as soon as that person walk away from them, they, they talking bad about them. That's the ways of the world. That's the shit people did in the world. Okay? We're not supposed to do as they do. All right, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. Having the understanding darkened, that means that when, when, that, when you're dealing like that, the Lord is going to let that seducing spirit con, co, corrupt you, consume you, and ultimately bug you out, okay? Being alienated from the life of Yahweh through ignorance that is in them. That's what's going to ultimately happen to your ass. And we've seen it. <laughs> we have examples in, these, in this modern church in this church, in this, this last days, right now, if that's going on. Because the blindness of their heart, they let their leaven grow, okay? Whom past being have given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness, all right? And, and what ultimately happens, uh, guys like that, when those seducing spirits corrupt them, consume them, then they just, they, they are worse than they were before they even came to the altar, before they came to the truth. They just start wilding out. All right. And they transform into a, a, a hideous creature, man. All right. That's going to be burnt with fire. All right. This is the book of uh, Sirach, chapter 19, verse 24. All right. And it's written He that have small understanding and fear of Yahweh is better than, better than one that have much wisdom. And transgresses the law of the Most High. You see, because um, a young brother is going to be mesmerized when he see a brother writing divine scriptures. Uh, and he's doing it gracefully, all right. And young brothers are uh, easily manipulated. They're going to want to follow that guy to the ends of the earth. I've seen it, all right. But no, that that guy's actions have to link up with those epistles he's bringing out, all right? That brother has to be a, a, a beautiful brother in word and deed, all right? Because it say, him that has small understanding and fear your how is better than that guy, all right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, hold up, I'm doing something right now. All right. Hey, look, I'm doing something. I'm going to talk to you in a few minutes. So like you for that. Okay. Uh, but yes. So the Lord deals with a, guy, a, a brother uh, that has, uh, he would rather deal with a guy that has small understanding, that fear him than a guy that has uh, a Rolodex of precepts in his mind and you know how to break down the breakdowns with the best of them. But he's, he's not dealing with the brother uh, according to the law. All right, he's being malicious with the affairs of Yahweh by Shema Shai's house. Okay, and um, let me go to uh, the book of Second Corinthians. This is Second Corinthians twelve 
and 18. And it's written, I desired Titus as whom I have sent a brother. All right. If he called Titus a brother, all right, Paul was the head of the, the church to the uh, Israelite fathers. You best believe T Titus was a brother in word and deed. Did Titus make a gain of you? Walk we not in the same spirit? See, Titus um, dealt with the church just the way Paul dealt with the church, how he taught Paul to deal with the church, by loving them, being a nursing father to them. Walk we not in the same steps? All right, he said, did he deal with you like I dealt with you? Yes. Okay. Again, think ye that we excuse ourselves unto you. We speak before Yahweh and Hamashiach, and you speak, and you do that in fear and trembling. But we do all things, dear brother, for your edifying. We're teaching each other and edifying one another so we can learn how to be rulers in the age to come and, and righteous judges, all right? For I fear, lest when I come, I shall not find you such as I would, all right? Dwelling in, dealing with you, with, with the, the church, with love, all right? Uh, dealing with brothers upright, okay? That's what Paul was saying. That's why it's been in another place. Paul say, be ye followers of me as I am of Yahweh Shah. That's what he was telling the Corinthians because he had a lot of bullshit going on in Corinthia in, in, um, in the early church. That's why he had to write them two letters because they was wilding out. They was doing fucked up shit. And that I shall be found unto you such as you are not. Lest there be debate. See, the Lord don't want us debating one another. Envyings. Rabs, stripes, backbiting, whispering, swellings. And when you go into that word swelling, it means becoming prideful, haughty, all right? Just being in an arrogant, conceited spirit. The Lord hates that. He resists the proud. To most, you got 10 men in the camp, three of them over here, three of them over there. They talking about the other three. Nah, man, that, that's off. And Paul said, I don't want to see that shit when I come around, y'all. That shit better not be nowhere around. Whisperings, backbitings. That's nigga woman shit, okay? Unless when I come again, my power will humble me among you that I shall bewail many which have sinned already and have not repented of the uncleanness and fornication and lasciviousness which they have committed. So Paul said, when I come back, I'm going to get on your ass and move that shit away from us. All right? He said, I don't want to see that shit when I come back. Okay? And those are the things that happen, man. Uh, and I've seen it. So the Lord is cleansing that shit from, in fact, you know what? I'm going to end off on now. I'm going to end on now. So uh, I'm a right design. This is edifying to the hearers, man. I love the body hood. I, you know what? I'm going to get that one. Love the brotherhood. Uh, love your brother. We got to be ready to die for one another, man. We got to not just saying that shit. We at the end. It's about to go down. We all we got. We got your high by Shema shine. You got your brother, man. All right. This is our. Nah, I'm looking for First Peter. So like it. All we got is each other. All right. That's all we got. The men that believe in this doctrine like you believe in this doctrine. That's all you got. Yahabah Shema Mashiach. This doctrine and your brother. All right. This is 1 Peter 2 and 17. Honor all men. Love the brotherhood. Fear Yahweh. Honor the king. That's what it's all about. Loving the brotherhood and fearing Yahabah Shema Mashiach. And honor it. Honoring Yahweh Shah. And fearing Yahweh, man. Fear Yahweh and Yahweh. Why Yahweh shot? Both of them. And loving the brotherhood. If you fear Yahweh by Shema Shai, you're going to love the brotherhood. You're not going to backbite your brother. You're not going to whisper about your brother. If your brother will fear you, you're going to tell him to his face what he's done to you. And y'all going to work that issue out. All right? You're not going to teach things you ought not teach. You're going to be self-controlled, tempered around a brother. You, you're going to carry yourself like an aristocratic king and you're going to demand your brother to do the same thing. All right? That's what we're here for, to love one another, edify one another, and die for one another. So with that, I'm going to give infinite honors to my Heavenly Father, my great King, Yahweh Bashim, Yahushua Bashim, Harak HaKadash. We give double honors to our teachers, the other apostles of the Great Millstone, and salutation to fellow laborers in Yahweh Shah. Kwam Yasharala, Abai Babala.